Hey everyone, welcome back to Hiletude Homesteading. I'm Rob, and I hope y'all are having a good week. In this video, we're giving an update on our gape worm treatment protocol for our backyard chicken flock. So this video is going to go over signs and symptoms of gape worm, treatment of gape worm, and natural preventative remedies that you guys can use in your backyard chicken flock. This video will include all information that the old video had in it, plus a few extra tips and tricks. Alright, so first we'll go over the signs and symptoms, and then we'll get into the treatment and natural preventative remedies. Alright guys, here we go. These are the signs and symptoms of gape worm. So gape worm can be a little bit hard to identify initially and that's because a lot of the symptoms that are associated with gape worm are also associated with other worm infestations. These can include things like if your chickens are lethargic or if they're not eating or drinking or if you just have a particular chicken that is not um, associating with the flock or something like that. So again, these symptoms can be indicative of a lot of different diseases and infestation, worm infestations. So it's not something that you're gonna want to use to exclusively identify gape worm or anything like that. It's just something that you can use to initially see that there's a problem in the chicken and then you're gonna have to do more observation to try and figure out if it's gape worm or something else. So these are some of the symptoms that I look for specifically in my chickens if I'm trying to identify gape worm. So the first thing I look for is excess coughing or wheezing. So this will be anything that the, uh, you know, again, the chickens are don't normally do. If, if your chickens are, you know, making a coughing noise or a wheezing noise or fixing their crown, you know, how they shake their head, if they're doing that in excess, this can be early sign of gape worm. Another sign that I look for is open mouth breathing or difficulty breathing. Now this one's a little difficult to do in the summer like we are right now because chickens are like dogs, they pant. So a lot of times chickens, if it's hot out, they will have their mouth open, they will be breathing. So don't use this symptom exclusively to identify gape worm, but it can be something that can give you a sign that maybe something is going on. Another symptom that I look for is any chicken that is gasping for breath or wheezing. So this goes with the coughing or difficulty breathing. Uh, these will be, again, a chicken that just is having trouble breathing or wheezing or something like that. And that's a really good telltale sign that it has gape worm because what gape worm is is actually a worm infestation in their trachea and those worms breed in their trachea and sooner or later it makes it too hard or difficult for them to breathe and that's how it ends up killing them. So we actually had a chicken about a year and a half ago die from gape worm, unfortunately, um, and that's how I kind of learned so much about it. That, that was early on when we first got the chicken, so we didn't really know what to look for, and we let it progress too far, and that chicken ended up dying. And in the later stages, it was uh, really hard to just watch the chicken, you know, not be able to breathe. So this is something that you really want to catch early, and something that you want to treat right away because it's it's a very it's not a very nice death for the chicken and it's not something pleasant for you to have to go through as an owner either. All right, so a lot of those symptoms that we just went over will be in the initial or middle stages of um, a chicken that has gape worm. The thing that will come in the later stages that will that you can use to 100% um, identify it as gape worm is the chickens will actually gape. So they will stretch their neck out like that and they will actually gape and that's why it's called gape worm and essentially what they're trying to do is is the um the worms at that stage are fr pretty far progressed and so they're just they're trying to expel them kind of you know they're, they're having difficulty breathing you feel something in your throat you know they're trying to get them out and at that stage usually what you can do if you're still um not sure that it's gape worm you can actually if you catch if you can catch the chicken that's a big if um, and get a flashlight and look down its throat usually at that stage you can uh, see physically you can actually see the worms and the worms are little red um, they're worms so little red worms and they have a Y split at the top so that's uh, the gaping and looking down the chicken's throat is a hundred percent the the a hundred percent way that you can identify gape worm the only problem with that is if you identify it at that stage, it's a little progressed, it's going to be a little bit farther along and you're going to have less of a chance of being able to save that chicken with regular treatment. Alright guys, so those are the main signs and symptoms of gape worm. Again, don't use any singular symptom to identify gape worm specifically. Try to observe your chickens and try to see 
two or three different symptoms before you identify it as gapeworm. If you're having trouble identifying it as gapeworm or trying to figure out what it is, don't worry. Like I said, the medicine and treatment that we're about to show you right here can be used for any worm infestation. And so if you think you have a worm infestation, you can treat your chickens. It just depends on the protocol, how long and how much medicine you want to give them. And so there's actually a protocol that encompasses all worms and all um, infestations. And if you're unsure about what your chicken flock has or something like that, you can just go for the gusto and give them the whole um, regimen. What we're going to do today is just a regimen for um, gape worm. So that's what we're going to go inside and I'm going to show you guys what medicine we use and what treatments we use and I'll give you the protocol and the, and the regimen and everything like that. If you're interested where I got this information or where I got this regimen from, I'll put the link below. It's actually f directly from the website of the uh, makers of the medication and they give you all the information about how long to give it, how much to give it and everything like that. Alright, so here we are in the kitchen and we're going to go over what we use to treat gape worm in our chicken flock. So I have two things here because I wanted to show you guys. So initially when we um, had gape worm, we had the chicken that had gape worm about a year ago. Like I said, we caught it a little late and so we didn't have this medication. So this medication is what we use now. This We bought this off just off Amazon, but we didn't have that yet. So what we did is we went to big, a big R store that day, the day we figured out the chicken had gape worm, and we bought this Panicure for... Um, Horses. And you can use this on chickens. Um, it's not as easy and it's not as fun and that's because it's a paste. And so essentially what you have to do, it won't dissolve in water so you have to give this paste to the chicken directly. So we had to catch the chicken, we had to open its mouth and we had to put this paste down its throat. And um, unfortunately that did not work. We caught it too late and that chicken died, unfortunately. So I just wanted to show you guys, if you are in a crunch and you can't uh, procure this stuff or something similar, you can usually go to a tra tractor supply, big R, something like that, and you can get something that, you wanna make sure it has this finbindazole in, in it, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter the brand name, but you wanna make sure it's this. And this is the um, chemical or the medicine that actually treats or kills the gape worm. All right, so if you're in a crunch, you can use that. But if not, what you wanna do is you wanna get this stuff right here. So this stuff is Safeguard, and you'll see it's the same stuff. It's Finbendazole. It's for goats, but you can use it on chickens, okay? You can use it on any livestock animal, really. It's just the amounts and everything like that, how long you give it. So the brand name is Safeguard. We got this off, off Amazon, pretty cheap, and this is what we use to treat a uh, gape worm in our chicken flock. All right, we use a syringe, and I'll show you in a minute how much we put in per gallon of water, and I'll also convert for you guys cc's in the syringe to teaspoons. So you guys, if you guys don't have a syringe, you can see how it's used or how much you're gonna put in. All right, so let's get at that. All right, so here we're at the sink, and I'm gonna show you guys how we prepare the medicine in the water to treat gape worm. So first things first, what you wanna make sure is that you only have one water source. So I usually have two different water sources out for the chickens. I have this thing and then I have a, a bucket with some um, nipples on it. And so I just take the bucket away and I just uh, give them this because you're gonna want them to you know, drink this water and not be able to drink any other water, all right? All right, so a couple things with treatment. Um, again, you're gonna to wanna to use this, the fin bendozol, all right? And this is in liquid form. So if you buy this one specifically, you can see it's in liquid. And we're gonna use a, sur a syringe to dispense the amount that we want. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do with treatment, the regimen for gape worm, is to treat for three days with the finbindazole, and then to wait three days before you eat the eggs. There have been studies that show that the, this medication can get in the eggs. So you're gonna wanna wait three days after you finish um, treating them to eat the eggs. So again, you wanna treat three days with this and then wait three days to eat the eggs. Now what we're doing today, this is a second treatment with this medication. So three months ago, I treated our chicken flock and you can catch that video on our channel. That was the first gape worm video, but we treated our chicken flock with this, uh, finbendazole. We treated them for three days. Um, three months ago, and then we waited three days to eat the eggs. 
And so now three months later, we're going to treat them again for three days. And that's because the worms can actually stay dormant. The eggs can actually stay dormant in their throat. And then those eggs can hatch and they can become adult worms. So you're in, uh, in three months time. So basically you're going to want to treat once for three days. And then you're going to want to wait three months and treat them again. So again, you're going to want to make sure this is the only water source that your chickens have. You're going to want to give them clean water every day. So you're going to want to do this every day for three days, all right? All right, here we go. So this is the amount that you're going to want to put in. So essentially, you're going to want to do three cc's of this, the Finbendolza, per gallon of water. So <clears throat> this thing holds three gallons, but I'm only going to put two gallons in. So I'm going to do six cc's of this. So three cc's per gallon of water. And you're going to want to be pretty pretty specific on this because chickens, they're small and they can overdose easily on this uh, medication. So you don't want to go overboard. It's actually better to go a little bit under if you, if you think you, so like if you, if you got too much medicine, you could put more water in basically. You want to go a little bit under so you don't um, have an overdose on your chickens or something like that. All right. So if you guys don't have a syringe, this is a regular teaspoon. I'm going to do three cc's So here you go. Three cc's is about, eh, I don't know, maybe three quarters of a, t of a teaspoon, a little bit more. So there you go. If you don't have a teaspoon, or if you don't have a syringe, you can use a teaspoon and measure out. Again, I'm going to do it again here. So let's go three cc's. Put the rest in there. Yeah, see, and that's about you know, maybe three-fourths of a teaspoon. So you just want to put it in there. Fill it up. And like I said, I'm going to do two gallons of water, three cc's per gallon of water. Three cc's per gallon of water. I'm going to say it again. Three cc's per gallon of water. Three cc's on a syringe equals about three-quarters of a teaspoon. All right, so lots of threes, guys. Three cc's per gallon of water. You treat for three days, you wait for three days to eat the eggs, and then you wait three months and you treat again for three days, all right? So lots of threes, but easy to remember. So here we go, I got two gallons of water. I went a little bit over two gallons, just like I was saying earlier, because I don't want to overdose with this medication. So two gallons of water. I have six cc's of medicine in there. And I'll be right back. I'm going to take this out to the girls and then we'll talk about some natural preventative uh, stuff that you can do at home to stop gapeworm before it happens. So the first thing that you can do and really the best thing and easiest thing you can do to help prevent gapeworm is to add apple cider vinegar to the chicken's water daily. So you don't want to do this with the medication. So when you're giving the three days of medication, you don't want to do apple cider vinegar. But uh, every other day after that, or just when you change your chicken's water, um, if you throw a splash of apple cider vinegar in the water, and the apple cider vinegar, it creates an acidic environment in the trachea and the stomach of the chicken, and this can help prevent the uh, worms from reproducing and growing. So that's the first thing you can do. That's real easy. Apple cider vinegar is cheap. You just add a splash to the water every day, or when you change the water, and that can help prevent gape. The other thing you can do at home to help prevent gapeworm is to add diatomaceous earth to the chicken's food. So you don't want to add two, more than 2% by weight of the total volume of the ration. So really all that means is you, you just want to put a little bit of diatomaceous earth in with, the chicken, with your chicken's feed and mix it around. You don't want to put too much because it can cause problems with the chickens and stuff like that. This is in addition to things that you can do to just keep them healthy overall which is, uh, you know, things like fermenting their food, making sure they have clean water, making sure they have enough space, you know, different things like that. All right, guys, well, I hope you found this uh, update video on gapeworm helpful. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I will try to answer them and help with gapeworm however I can or anything else that has to do with your chickens or homestead. So again, I'm Rob. Thanks for joining us on Holitude Homesteading. Y'all have a good day.